Welcome to the Mindful Millennial Podcast, where host Seth Marcus dissects and discusses all things impacting the millennial mind. Mentors, peers, and professionals share intimate conversations on subjects such as entrepreneurship, exercise, and health, the blessings and curses of technology, travel, and how to navigate adulthood in this age of information. We're the largest generation in history, and we dictate the future. The Mindful Millennial finds a signal through the noise. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Mind Mill Podcast. Guys, I can't believe my trip is in its final weeks. I've been gone from the US for over four months as I record this intro, and honestly, I can't wait to get home. There's plenty of America that I have not missed, which ironically is what Europeans love to ask me about. So what do you think about Trump? Ugh, as if talking politics is fun for anyone. My default answer has become, well, why do you think I'm traveling? It seems to get the point across. While I don't miss the BS we Americans seem to be force-fed these days, I miss my community, my friends, and my own room. I haven't had to share a room since freshman year in college and don't plan on ever doing it again after this trip, besides maybe marriage. But for real, the experiences of this time of travel have been profound. I've learned so much about this planet and about myself, much of which will slowly digest after I return. But that's for later. Now I have a few more weeks in Europe and a show to introduce. Today we are with Laura St. John, part two of the Upward Spiral series here on the Mind Mill. Laura is the co-owner of the Strong Confident Living Wellness Program and Denver local gym, Pearl Street Fitness. She is also the wife of my last guest, Scott St. John. Be sure to check out that episode as well as we discuss many complimentary topics. Their story is truly incredible and inspiring to those interested in health, relationships, and in business. While Scott is the ball-breaking fitness, get-her-done, quote, salt of the duo, Laura is definitely the sugar. She is a beacon of light. It's literally what her name means. She leads the nutrition, motivation, and mindset side of the Strong Confident Living program. Her videos and online support have not only inspired me, but they encourage and educate people all over the world. Laura's positivity is infectious. I've never met someone with so many catchphrases. Together, Scott and Laura are community leaders, both in Denver and all over the digital world. Their message has positively shifted the bodies and minds of myself, friends, and family. And they're just getting started. Even as I travel, their worldwide workout fitness videos keep me sweating and health focused. I'm so grateful to gain a glimpse into the mind of Laura St. John. In this interview, we discuss tool over toy philosophy for technology, growing a business with a spouse, the infinite power of positivity, and mind body connection. I hope you enjoy this interview with Laura St. John. Well, Laura St. John, welcome to the Mindful Millennial Podcast. I'm very excited to be here. Yeah, we did the worldwide workout last weekend. And right before you came on, you were like, I feel like we've seen each other. We've talked a bunch, but we haven't got to know each other. And I was like, you're absolutely right. And I was so excited that when you were eager to be on the show. So, Absolutely. I appreciate so the time. And I think time is the biggest commodity in life. So Absolutely. I appreciate everybody listening to this and the time you took to ask me to be part of it. Well, thank you. I like to start these shows with something a bit unique. And I thought today when I was figuring out a framework for this interview, I thought, what do I want to ask Laura first? So I'm going to scratch my own itch. I'm on day two of an isogenics cleanse right now. <laughs> and I want to know what your little <laughs> hack is for second day hangriness. Because the second day gets a little hairy. Okay. So healthy hack towards cleansing your body is picture it already done. Picture it done. I want you to just see yourself there this time tomorrow having so much success. And I think that's any hack of anything that you're going through, any kind of struggle. You're doing your body an amazing service right now. You're cleaning it out. It's a deep clean. It's not just a dusting. You're getting down to your cells. So I really just want you to picture your cells being so happy, the most minute portion of your body being like, thank you. Thank you for <laughs> nurturing me. Thank you for cleaning me out. This is going to outweigh the brownies or the <laughs> bagel or whatever you're even wanting right. right now. Picture it done. It's never been as difficult physically as it is mentally. My experiences with the cleansing, it's been more, I don't even consider it like a lack of energy. It's just like a different wavelength of energy. It's a little bit lower than normal, but it's more stable in a lot of ways. It's not as up and down as on a normal eating day. Do you have the same? Yeah, I think the experience? more you do cellular cleansing, I've been doing it for seven years. I thought it was just going to be a 30 day quick fix and be done. I thought, oh, just quick fix my body or detox quickly. And the more you weave it into your lifestyle, the more you just keep peeling back the layers. It's actually a more sometimes of an emotional and mental shift for people just as much as it is in their body physical. 
And that's where the real change starts to happen. So just know that, yeah, it could be a mental challenge of saying, can I get through these two days of this major intermittent fast? What is happening to my body? And sometimes it's beyond just the physical result that you'll see. You'll feel different. Mm -hmm. But the more you do it, the better you get. The more I look forward to it, the more I'm kind of like, man, I could really go for one of those. Not like I really don't want Monday to come because of it, right? Yeah. And the more that you peel back the layers every time you do it, you'll have more success with it because you're going to be that much more rebalanced. Your body will be rebalanced each time. So last week I interviewed your husband, Scott St. John, and I cannot wait to get the back to back episode feel and see where you guys are completely in synergy and where you guys complement each other too. So I see you guys, and I'm sure I'm not the first to say it is like sugar and a salt. You're just so friendly and super positive beacon and Scott's just a hard ass <laughs> you know, <laughs> with a great message and he's so empowering. Yeah. He is absolutely a hard ass. Yeah. So we talked a lot about training and fitness on his end, but I wanted to talk more about the dreamscaping and the vision that you provide in your guys' strong, confident living business approach. Sure. Well, you read us spot on. There are so many things that we're very synergistic with, which has kept us on our journey for decades and will keep us on our journey for decades more. And that is a love of where we're going always. It's a very forward thinking approach to how are we becoming better together and individually at all times? And then how do we bring that energy to the world? How do we show up in our best selves to bring that? And that everyone's different. What we have challenged one another is to each be our own voices and Scott has pushed me in ways that no one else has ever pushed me. I and I'm sure it. I have pushed him in ways <laughs> that no one has ever pushed him. And that yin and yang is a really special sauce. Sometimes you do have to be totally opposite in approach. And with that, we can reach more people. Has that been a consistent dynamic or has it kind of molded over time to that? We look back from when we met at 19 and 20 and we are such different people and we are different people. We are still the same beings underneath, but we have grown and evolved so much just even in the last couple years, let alone having kids, getting married, moving out West. I mean, we've been through so much together. We've probably been through everything that you can think of as a couple <laughs> from hardships to positive things. And from each time you just build strength and you decide where do we go from here? But because that vision of, of always what's tugging us towards the future is so strong for us, mm -hmm. it always pulls us back together. What do you think has catalyzed, you mentioned the last two years, and I can't help feel almost the same energy. I don't know if it just happens to be the people that we surround ourselves with, or it's a community event here, but the friends that we share, it just seems like there is rapid acceleration of positivity and creativity and productivity. And I want to know what your take is on that. I agree. I think once you tune into a frequency of being like, I want to go here, you then put out a desire that then you basically vibe, you find your people that are desiring the same stuff, the same things in life, even if we're all then experiencing that differently. Yeah. We're all sort of along the same lines of I love the quote that Scott sometimes says is, I didn't change. You just stayed. <laughs> so people, people decide maybe to stay at a certain, the best way to explain it to me is like the radio channel. If I want to go to 100.4, who else is at 100.4? At 100.4, we want to live healthier. You want to make healthy, not hard, or we want to make it fun. We want to be active. We want to feel better as we age, not worse. Yeah. Who are those people? Well, anyone turning into 100.4 is going to be there. Sure. And I think that's kind of cool is that you're not dragging people ever. What we've seen with our exponential growth in the last two years is there's an audience out there of people that are like, I want that versus trying to be like, don't you want to come with me? Don't you want this? Don't you want that? When people may not be ready for it. Yeah. Then you turn around and there's millions of people waking up saying, I just want to change. I want a simple nutrition solution. I want a simple workout solution. I need to change my mindset a little bit. We focus on those three things to really just tune into those people and they find us. Yeah. Your uh, principle, start with an end in mind, essentially, is so important because it just feels so intangible when you set a goal like, I just want to be in better shape. You can't touch that goal, but you can say like, I want to pursue going to the gym four days a week. I want to do this, that, and the other. And when you set yourself with a goal and you see that ending, it makes, most importantly, the next day, the next moment's decisions that much easier 
because you have a guiding light as opposed to just like, well, I think I'll make this decision now and then I'll see where I feel later. I think that's yeah. what keeps people on the couch or in the drive through line as opposed to in the grocery or in the gym, right? Something that we do very unique to Strong Confident Living is we tap into the feelings behind the goal because it's the feeling behind the goal that is going to get you there or not. So what we see is that people from a mindset perspective get sometimes stuck in the same situation. They're like, but I've been here before. Three months ago, I felt this way. Two years ago, I felt this way. I've tried everything. Nothing's working. And what we realized is if you can tap to the next layer, that emotional mental part, the feeling behind that physical goal, oh, I'd love to go to the gym four days a week. Well, we know reality is going to hit sometimes. And whether you have a sick kid or a work project or this and that, then suddenly if you're only looking at that physical goal and you feel derailed, you're going to feel that you got derailed. Whereas if we can take it one deeper dive, which is what we do at Strong Confident Living, what is the feeling that you want at the end game when you get to that goal, knowing that there's not really that end game. You're going to go from point A to point B. Then point B, you think that next six week challenge is over. Well, then there's going to be a point C and Mm -hmm. it's this never ending process. But if you can know the feeling that you want by, gosh, when in four months, after I've gone to the gym four days a week for four months, I'm going to feel like this. And that's the feeling I'm after. Mm -hmm. Then you can tap into that feeling now. And that accelerates people to their goals in an unbelievable way. I love your radio station analogy because it's so true in your lifestyle and it's also true in you, Laura's business right now. People subscribe to your page, your business. They want your message. So people are literally subscribing to your radio channel right Mm -hmm. now. Where did that evolve sure. from? Yeah. I mean, that is really just people putting on glasses. I always call it like another analogy I make is it's just putting on a new pair of glasses. If you don't want to see the world in your current state, the step one that I always give people is first decide why you want to change and then don't look backwards in disgust. Never go into action from a negative place or you'll circle back to the negative place. I believe in the up spiral. It's another like coined phrase of mine where I up spiral <laughs> people's lives. So that was the goal and intention of how do we just help people put on a new pair of glasses and see the world shift in a whole different way. I love the example of looking at a garbage truck. If you look at a garbage truck out the window, someone might put on a pair of glasses and say, that's disgusting. It's full of trash. It's nasty. But then I'm like, well, put on the strong, confident living glasses. And then someone might say, oh my gosh, I own a trash company. That's the most beautiful truck I've ever seen, but it's still the same truck. And with strong, confident living, our vision was when we saw people transforming inside our gym walls at Pearl Street Fitness in Denver, Colorado, we just had this vision of, wow, they're way deeper going than a physical transformation here. There is something happening emotionally, mentally that is shifting people's lives outside our walls. So how do we reach more people without duplicating more locations? Mm -hmm. That was basically our just, how do we reach thousands, which now turned into millions of people worldwide with this approach to live a more strong and confident lifestyle? And we looked at our tagline at Pearl Street Fitness. We said, strong, confident people. We took our years of experience working in the teaching education realm saying, label free. People can walk in our doors just like our students used to come into our classroom when we used to teach kids and they can drop all their labels. So that was one of our first guiding principles. How do you peel off all the labels that you've ever received in your life? Mm -hmm. I'm athletic. I'm fat. I'm a housewife. I'm a this. I'm a that. How do you peel that off and really get to the raw you? Mm -hmm. So at the gym, we were realizing we were like creating these pearls. Everyone's a unique pearl. They're a gem. They're unlike each other. And we said, how do we take that soul, that essence of Pearl Street, that essence of strong, confident people and breathe life into the world using some of these same guiding principles that came from our many years of working with kids and teachers and education and a lot of the things that made our educational platform very successful in a fitness realm and now saying, how do we bridge the real life experience with a digital experience so we can reach and impact tons of people? So we really dove deep into, gosh, we really start more with mindset. Like Scott says, it's all starts between your ears. Absolutely. (laughs) And we looked at our years in education. We would always be teaching the children. You can do anything if you put your mind to it. It was our slogan Mm -hmm. for our company. And then we're like, wow, we're doing that now with fitness. 
how do we do that now digitally? So we looked at our tagline, strong, confident people. And then in 2014, 2015, just about two plus years ago, at the time of this podcast, we realized, what if we made that our lifestyle? Everyone's always asking us, well, what's your secret sauce? What are you guys doing? And we're like, well, it's not necessarily what we're doing because what exactly I'm doing might not work for Seth, Mm -hmm. right? And it might not work for Scott. But what if we just became an example of what's possible and we put our voice out there every single day? We put exactly what we were doing with our parenting, with our life, with our mindset, with our fitness, with our nutrition. And we'll just put our lives out there and see publicly, people will get to see our transformations. That's what happened. It started with 700 people and now it's over 27,000, all organic. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I don't necessarily see fitness the same way that Scott does. I think few people do. But the example that you guys leave and the consistency, when you click on to your guys' page, you see you guys being active, responding to people who have specific questions, posting your videos and just being very genuine in everything you do. And it separates you from other fitness, especially where it's more models like you could be this if you follow our specific plan. And it's not necessarily that cut and dry. You said you got to peel away the layers, remove your labels and realize that you are what you mold yourself to be. And it's a series of decisions every single day. I've been inspired by that when I'm traveling. I'm lucky enough to be in Denver so I can experience Laura St. John in person like right now. However, when I'm traveling, there's no site I'd rather go to than Worldwide Workout or get some inspiration. And I know that once I'm out of the country for a while, it's going to be that much stronger. I'm going to rely on it that much heavier. So just thank you so it's much. Cool. For what well, you I guys invite you to be a voice in there. I think what's cool about the explosion of it is that we're leading by example, but then people are bubbling up and stepping up at any point. I always say, go from stalking to talking, right? <laughs> <laughs> go from stalking to talking. I, <laughs> I stopped writing down all your catchphrases. <laughs> I started and now I'm, I'm done. We'll just people, have to we have so it. many stalkers, which is great. <laughs> And sometimes people will reach out to me and be like, I've been stalking you for six months online and now I'm ready for nutrition or, hey, I need a new plan or I'm following your workouts or I really loved what you had to say about your broadcast on judgment or moving from self-doubt to trust or the things that are really in my heart that I share. What's really cool to me every day about Strong Confident Living is not just the content we produce, it's who's going to bubble up and become a voice today. Who's going to share their struggle? Because someone's struggle is the next person's inspiration. And the way we can strip away nutrition, fitness, and mindset, Strong Confident Living is built on a community of people that's all about love and support. So there is a big hug that happens and people embrace one another and we embrace the difference of one another, which is Mm -hmm. great. So I think that that was our goal is to build a community that would be a legacy beyond us. That would be a self-sustaining organism of people getting great every single day. And that's what's happening now that we've reached 10 to 20,000 people, Mark. It started happening where people would post a question I'm struggling with X, Y, or Z, or how to meal prep, or how to do this. And 70 people will answer. Yeah. And it's not you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's centralize that. From a business sense, that's what we did to mm-hmm. really centralize the support so we could focus on growing the business. I struggle myself. We were talking before the show. I'm getting very good at managing my own personal space with my own journaling and my to-do lists and my own little world. But I have a hard time sharing. I'm very confident in what we do here at the show and and other things, but I don't have essentially the trigger finger for posting a lot. And you guys have bridged that gap so well between posting regularly and high quality while also maintaining the genuine message too. I know that I'm not alone in that world because it's kind of like a mix between your humility, your dedication and discipline to feeding your own message. It's difficult. Do you have recommendations for those maybe earlier in the stages of strong, confident living, for example, and where to begin in that? I do. I have very clear steps because I want people to step into their voice and their leadership. I believe that everybody has a story and a message to be heard. So to get comfortable with that, it's really important that step one is just start liking. So you don't actually have to do any talking. So we go from stalking to step one of just liking, hitting that little thumbs up button. So if someone has something exciting to share, give them a thumbs up. If someone is sharing a struggle, give them a little heart. 
or if there's a broadcast that's inspiring you, just hit the share button and share it out if you don't want to type or be a voice yet. So that is always step one of engagement. And then I would just say, wait till you really feel inspired by someone else's post. So start with motivation, which is looking externally outside of you to go into action. Always start outside of you first, because that's usually the easiest place for people to start Mm -hmm. is, oh, I love that quote. That quote really resonates with me and something that lit something up inside me because it's that motivation that's going to turn you on and then just hit that share. Now, the next thing that you'll see is from just being more likely to hit the share button or hit the like button, you're going to just be getting more comfortable participating and engaging yourself into the audience more as a participant and view yourself as an active participant right now, even if you're just watching us. You're still participating. Sure. We feel the energy. Mm -hmm. It's being lit up. And that's what's happening around the world right now with this movement. But I think the next step is when someone is hurt or struggling is usually the easiest place to start. You may be more like, I don't want to share my success or I don't want to come off this way. So help someone. That would be my next suggested step. When you see someone struggling with something and you've been there before, or you can just be like, way to go. You're going to make it through. Sure. Be that voice first, because it's just going to help you to start talking. And then you'll migrate into going, I always say, from motivation to inspiration, where every time you feel motivated or you're helping someone, it's going to uplift you. And I like to say that we rise by lifting others. So the more you can be part of the love and support in Strong Confident Living, which is the base of our foundation, the more you'll continue to find, well, what's my voice here? What was my experience in this? And you'll go from helping someone to actually relating to them. Well, this happened to me too, and this is what I did to get out of that. Right. And then you'll start talking before you know it, then you're (laughs) posting. And it is that process because everyone's dealt with pain points and everyone's found solutions. And the more that we share that in our own unique perspectives, the more this thing grows. That is freaking awesome. (laughs) I really appreciate you (laughs) filling that in. I want to throw in the counterpoint to that as well, though. In my experiences and how I live my life, mitigating and controlling when and how I use my screens is a huge part of me staying focused on my goals and achieving what I want to on the day. And this kind of maybe might bleed into a little bit of your guys' business operations and work family balance, but how do you handle screen use versus running an online business? Just flipping through and the mundane, getting sucked into it versus using it intentionally. Right. Okay. So luckily our past business, and I believe everything's a stepping stone to the next thing Mm -hmm. in your life, right? So even your hardships, everything's a stepping stone for the next thing. But our past business was in education technology. And our focus of that business for children was how to teach children to use technology as a tool and not a toy. How do we use technology for the most empowering uses? Because people freak out about technology, but it really is just another tool, just like an art easel and a paintbrush. Mm -hmm. How do we use it? as a tool. So our experience has been before this 15 to 20 years on training teachers and educators and students on how to empower yourself using technology first as a tool of self-expression. And that's where I always encourage people to start, whether you're stalking the talking, how can you express yourself using today's technology? So that's an intent, not just going in and flipping through and hitting the likes on the Instagram or whatever. How am I using it today as a tool for self-expression? Start Mm -hmm. there because that's where you find your voice. How can I, and it might happen in an email. It might happen in an art program. It might happen in a music program. It might happen in a software editing program. You're using it as a tool for your own self-expression. I think that's really cool. I actually created this when I was 19 years old. I created a theory of interactive learning about how to harness technology. And this was pieces of it. But the second- And that was obviously way before (laughs) before. we're in this this, this atmosphere. It was when technology was first coming out. and Mm And my mom, who was a teacher, and my dad, who was into technology, saw this as- a tool to level the playing field. I'm sitting behind a microphone. The microphone doesn't know the color of my skin, how old I am, anything. So when you recognize that technology is not this big, scary thing, it is connecting the globe. It is connecting us to a satellite in space that's bouncing information immediately. So anyone could be tuning in and listening to us right now. To me, I'm curious. I'm always fascinated. And I think really big. And suddenly I see it as a tool to just empower and help and learn and facilitate and communicate. So it's all again, what you focus on. I focus on the 
uses of it. So with our technology for kids business, our tagline was using it as a tool and not a toy. Mm -hmm. So that's ingrained in my head. How am I using technology today as a tool and not a toy? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might just want to decompress and flip through Facebook and see what's going on. But if you are waking up saying, what's my intent with any platform I'm using, whether it's technology, my food in front of me, Mm -hmm. the conversation I'm about to have, who I'm meeting with today, it's always your intent behind it. So anyway, tool for self-expression, tool for learning. It's an amazing tool for learning. It's also a scary tool for learning. There's a ton of information Mm -hmm. out there. What's real, what's not real. What do you feel about that? And then using it as a tool again to just assimilate information. I think there's learning always going on. How are you taking this content into your body, your perspective? How are you synthesizing that information or assimilating that information? And then how are you going to use it to self-express it back out? And it kind of goes back to the first thing, using technology as a tool to self-express yourself. So we do it for creativity, learning, and self-expression. We taught it for so many years to kids that I think it just became part of who we are and how we harness it. I want to talk a little bit about when you had this period of growth, because I think recently I glanced at a a post that was kind of like a throwback. And there was a moment where a lot of what you had been teaching, you started to apply not only to adults and fitness, but also more and more to yourself too. And obviously these things are slow processes that happen throughout a whole lifespan and having children has a huge impact on it your partner, your business, everything is a a player in this. But do you have a story about how the shift happened for you specifically? Honestly, it goes all the way back to when I was six years old. My mom was diagnosed with cancer and given a couple of years to live. And I learned at a really young age, the power of love, family, mindset, core values quickly. Mm. I think in finding soul purpose and some of the things we've talked about offline, I learned it at a really young age. A lot of people go to find what they want to do or how they want to transform. And I think I've never really sweated the small stuff because I saw at a really young age. And then I saw my mom beat cancer Hmm. and live and just have this power of, wow, you can do anything. You could really do anything. You're capable of anything. And how can I bring that to the world? So I started that process at a very young age. I also started the process of, I just always wanted to be that light miss that kind of dark period that was hard on my family. I always wanted to be the one helping and making people feel happy. It made me feel good to make others feel happy. Sure. So it's kind of a selfish thing when you really look at it, but it needs to be, you know, you have to fill your cup first so you can pour to others. And what I realized is that I kind of started shutting that off. I don't know when, you know, maybe middle school, high school, when you go through your own like transformations and you start looking exterior of who am I? What do I need to be? And I started pleasing everybody else more than myself. And I would always put myself last. Hmm. And I think that's really normal and natural for humans is that we want to help other people. And it's a natural tendency, I think, for women as mothers and stuff like that, we typically put ourselves last. So I wound up recognizing that I was falling into a pattern of, but what makes Laura happy? Who is Laura and what makes her happy? And I kind of felt for a while, I shut off a light switch inside me. And I don't know why. Uh, Putting others first light switch? Just like tapping into some inner power that I had that I just shut off in order to just look outside me. But what I recognize is, how could I really help other people when I wasn't a hundred percent necessarily making myself happy first. So I would say in the last three to four years, there has been a tremendous growing pain (laughs) shift that's sometimes painful when you're going. And sometimes it's elation of just such happiness that you are finding who you are. A lady also named Laura shared with me that our name L means toward and aura is light. And I was like, toward the light. Oh my gosh, my it's been a little <laughs> dark for a while. I haven't turned on my own light switch. I've got to go toward the light. That is my name and that is my purpose. And that is where I want to help people turn on that inner light switch that's inside all of us. Sure. And I've turned it on now so bright. I've always felt sort of like the sun. Scott calls me the sun. I just feel the energy outside my body. I believe in the intangible. I believe so much in feelings. I've talked to a lot of energy people and they're like, wow, you're really got strong feeling. You really follow that gut, that intuition. And I feel like I've taken the last couple of years to really tap into who I am and what makes me happy. 
And with that, stepping into my courage of who am I to the world and not being scared anymore of that power. I think sometimes people say that you're more likely to be scared of your own success than failure. What's actually possible for you versus not possible. And I kind of always had believed before this, as I gained more power, that I would somehow be judged. And I was able to release that feeling of judgment. That was only skepticism and self-doubt that I had in myself. Yeah. And it's been that journey of the last couple of years of just digging, digging, digging. You know, I believe wholeheartedly that that decision that you made and understanding the light switch philosophy has only perpetuated what you originally set out to do anyway, which is helping others. By taking care of yourself first, you have been so much more potent of a force to continue doing what you love, which is serving others while serving yourself too in there. And it's interesting how you think, oh, well, if I take 30% of my effort of giving to others and I bring it back to myself, that feels selfish and I'm going to be immediately taking away from others. But your capacity just expands, right? Yeah. If you look at yourself as 100% whole, sometimes I felt like I was shining so bright that someone was like, I want to shine too. Darken up a little, Laura, right? Like, okay, like yeah. give me a piece of this. Mm -hmm. And what I realized is, no, when you step into 100% you, then you're really helping someone just shine the light on. They can step into 100% them, whatever that is for them. So, I mean, I just threw out a lot of things for myself, both physically, mentally, emotionally. I was like, I want to rock six pack abs in my forties. It was always my goal. So people are seeing Wait, some of were, my when physical. You were 12, you wanted to have a <laughs> no, six no, pack in your forties. Not 40. always. <laughs> but like in my twenties, I met Scott at 19. Right. Until a couple of years ago, I didn't even own a pair of shorts. Mm -hmm. And people see me as this fitness person now, even globally going into different markets and stuff and always assume that I've had the confidence and self-esteem to me that comes on the inside by turning that light switch up. Yeah. They assume I've always had it. And I'm saying it, I've had it, it's inside me, but it was buried for a long time. It's, it's a muscle that can yeah. either be strong and you're using it every day or it can be atrophied mm -hmm. and just kind of dwindling there. And it's the same with, we were talking about meditation beforehand. Mm -hmm. like, everybody can meditate. It's can you strengthen that muscle? It's just training just like anything else. And, exactly. And confidence. The nice thing about your specific field and your position in that field is that it's exponential. It's kind of like a snowball effect. The fitness spurs the confidence, spurs the giving back to others and the strong, confident living movement. And it just keeps cycling, mm -hmm. right? And people see the physical result. They see what's going on with me on the outside. So they're encouraged or sometimes feel motivated, but I know that's just the spark then inside them that's lighting them up to see the transformation back to your original question that has happened even in my body in mm. the last four years of me putting my life out there being like, well, why don't I just follow what I'm saying I'm doing? <laughs> it's pretty simple right. if you just keep it simple. And I've just been following a pretty consistent regimen that has not been difficult, that it really helps people wipe away a lot of the guilt. I help people and myself move away from past and just move into their future. And that's a really strong piece of using my imagination and belief to create whatever I want to create. And the physical results are just literally the manifestation of what had to happen first, energetically, emotionally, mentally. So I like bringing people through more of that energy piece mm -hmm. of how do you shift first and then see the results after. So the six pack abs are all these things that people are like, well, can't you just do a course on how to get your abs or how to do this? I am. I'm constantly giving you my mindset tips, my mm -hmm. emotional tips, the how to make these shifts in your life, mm -hmm. because that stuff happens later. So right. yeah, you could do the worldwide workout with me. But if you're still waking up, beating yourself up from the little bit of pizza you had yesterday or the chocolate cake you had last night or the burger, yeah. you're never going to shift. So right. my favorite part is the other, the intangible pieces first creating and then the tangible being the result. Exactly. The motivation first and understanding what drives you and then the symptoms will be the working out and the mm -hmm. better eating habits and the better decisions on a daily basis. I wanted to ask you about the Isogenics program simply because it has kind of swirled around me here in Denver and I've been in it. I've been out of it. I've tried other things and I enjoy the program a lot, but obviously it's something that's been a huge part of your guys's journey. I guess I want to know, first of all, was this the first thing you tried or what caused you to land on this specific program? Sure. So Scott was always the guy that was trying everything would go to the health stores and try everything. I never considered really myself as a worker outer of the 
apparently he was the fitness guy. Well, now that I, I've done the worldwide workout with you, I understand. I kind of just came along for the ride when we first met in college. I was like, yeah, you're cute. I'll work out with you. Um, yeah. So I didn't really consider myself a fitness person or a nutritionist. I just knew that there had to be tools. Ironically, I wanted to open an ice cream shop when I was little to help people get happy. Here I am now giving shakes and helping people nutritionally. But the vehicles, I believe when your vision is strong of where you are now and with your willpower moving in alignment towards who you want to become, I believe that the right vehicles fall on your lap, whether you realize it or not at the moment that you need them. So my friend Bethany was always trying to tell me, do isogenics, do isogenics. I'm like, I don't do shakes. I don't do that. I focus on clean eating, blah, blah, blah. Right. So, but Scott does, but he wasn't interested. He's like, I'm happy with what I'm doing. So it, that would kind of just percolated. Was, where were you guys at at that at point? At that point, we lived in Breckenridge, Colorado. We were working out with our friend and she was like, sure. you really love this stuff for performance and all this. And mm -hmm. I just kind of planted the seed being like, no, I don't think that stuff's for me. And what I didn't realize is that it is a whole just body rebalancing program, not just a weight loss program, not just an athletic performance program. But when your body's in balance, you don't hold on to weight. When your mm. body's in balance, you can perform better athletically. So I didn't realize those things at that time. It wasn't until I had the need. And that's why I always say back to the radio station, where do you want to tune into? I was stuck. After having my third son, I could not lose the baby weight. I had lost it with the first two. I don't know if my body endured additional stress. Probably did <laughs> during the third child. But I could not get rebalanced. I didn't realize I was even off balance. I just knew I needed to lose weight. Yeah. And I remembered my friend telling me about isogenics. And I really thought I was never going to do it. But you know what? What do I have to lose? 30-day money-back guarantee. I'll give it a shot. Called her. I'm ready to do it. I'm like, Scott, just do this thing with me. Totally thought it would be a 30-day reset. Never thought it would be lifestyle. Sure. I'm clean eating. I'm working out with Scott. Something's off in my body. I cannot shake this weight. And she's like, just try it. Put it in your body. Watch what happens. That's my favorite line now. Put it in your body. Watch what happens. That's what I tell people every day uh, as I share the story. And I, within 30 days, felt like that light switch started to come back on. That nutritionally, that rebalance also lit up something emotionally and mentally as I was shifting. But I was going then from an unhappy person in my skin being kind of snappy towards Scott and my kids because I think everyone can relate when you're putting yourself last and not first in happiness. The people closest to you are usually the ones that suffer the most oh, yeah. from your low energy. Mm -hmm. I need to be a higher energy person. This is not the mom I want to be. This is not the business person or wife I want to be, but I'm unhappy in me. And I knew I was unhappy in me physically because you could see that. You can look down and be like, I'm not happy with this. Yeah. I need to change. But the once I, you set to the frequency of like, I want to change. And I'm like, oh yeah, that tool called Bethany had it shipped to my house. I can picture that box now hitting our Morrison house because I'm grateful for it now every morning. Mm -hmm. This is seven years ago. And thinking that it was just going to be fast track, reset, done. And I felt so good. Scott felt so good. He's like, I don't know what's in this stuff. This is way different than any other protein or whatever I've ever done. And what we realized quickly was that the science behind it is just, it's a rebalancing. And isogenics means balanced body. And everybody eats Yet most people due to stress in their life are off balance. So whether that was stress for me from a pregnancy, stress from an emotional event, car accidents, people being sick, whatever, stress in our everyday lives, your body has natural mechanisms to deal with stress. But I call today's stress our modern day plague in America and in our society. I walk around and I see all these people overweight and I could just see it sometimes where they're holding their stress in their gut, in their belly yeah. is a lot of, I'm like, gosh, if you could just release the stress and release that toxicity that is caught in your cells. And a lot of people, as I talk to them, it's fascinating because I'm like, at what point did things down spiral? That's why I believe in the up spiral. And they're like, well, I got a divorce three years ago, or I got in this accident or this happened and they can lead it to a point and everyone can relate to a down spiral. And then I started eating bad and then this happened and I stopped my gym membership. And all I can keep hearing is you're putting yourself last. You're putting all these things above you mm -hmm. and you need to show up in a better energy. Isogenics to me is just a so easy solution for people for nutrition to rebalance their bodies and also keep it simple by eating more throughout the day. So yeah. weave it in.
it's for some people. It might not be for some people. I always say just try it. Mm -hmm. See if it works for you. I love coaching people through the process of not only their physical shift, like even for you on a cleanse day today, the emotional (laughs) shift and the mental shift being like, I just crushed that. What else can I crush? I can crush Mm -hmm. a cleanse day or I could crush this nutrition and feel better in my skin in 30 days. What else can I do? And it's taking that skill set of change and transformation. Mm -hmm. And it's just another vehicle to do it. I think it's also important because I'm right there with you. Just crush life. But a lot of people, they're like, I don't want to crush that. I I like my downtime. I like relaxing. It's like, well, then yeah, crush a book. Take your downtime as seriously as your work day, right? You know, like book yourself clear and binge that Netflix, but know that you earned it. And then you're back in your work mode the next day. People would be surprised how much downtime I have. (laughs) People think like, oh, you're so busy. You're Laura St. John. You're growing this movement. You're doing all this. I provide myself with so much me time now. A lot of nurturing time, a lot of self-love mm-hmm. time, a lot of time with just myself and my thoughts and my strategies. And yeah. I think the world needs more of that. Just a refocusing on what makes you happy. And when I ask people that and they don't know I'm like, does the color blue make you happy? Does purple make you happy? Does sushi make you happy? Does, (laughs) you know, like what? Does ice cream, does this, does that? And just start making that list because that's how you find who you are. I was tickled when you pulled out your notebook. You're like, I don't know if I'm going to need to write anything down, but I'm going to, I'm going to have it here anyway, because that's exactly how I am as well. I wanted to talk a little bit about your guys' kind of like nuts and bolts of what keeps you guys organized and successful in these multiple businesses that you guys are a part of. And also talking a bit about how the isogenics lifestyle and how that impact seven years ago, at what point that shifted into more of a business opportunity that Mm -hmm. it's become for you guys today. So can you expand a little bit on, on that? From a nuts and bolts perspective, I think there's no such thing as balance. I believe in that you create your balance over a long period of time. That work-life balance, you gotta blend the two. So one thing that we see that kind of mushed into the Isogenics business was how do you become your best you and then have your work be an extension of who you are? So you can match who you are with what you do and you're 100% congruent in the world. When you match that, you wake up every day. I ask my kids and stuff, what day is today? Almost every day. I don't even know what day of the week it is. And I think that's a sign of a true entrepreneur. I only know the weekends are different because they're home from school. But I love my life so much now that I literally wake up and I can't wait to, I get out of bed excited every day. Awesome. And I want people to have that feeling. So what happened, and I see isogenics as just another vehicle for that, because when you start feeling better, again, and you start applying that to other areas, it's like, what else can I do? The lifestyle is, I do have this plain piece of paper. (laughs) We write our vision and goals in pencil. They're clear, but I write out, I mean, I'm just kind of getting into some of the nuts and bolts. Please do. I write out, um, I fold a piece of paper in half. And on one side, I write personal core values and goals. And on the other half, professional. And I want to match them. And then I write down the next 10 years or more. Okay. So I put the year starting in this year. So 2017 or whoever's listening to this at whatever time. And then I write it down and I write down what, how old I'll be and how old the kids will be and what our life looks like during those years. So I'll already know, like at 2020, for example, I know Sam's 16, Will's 14, Lucas is 12. I'm 44. That's a golden year for me because I'm obsessed with the number four. Okay. I call it 2020 vision, crystal clear vision. And I want everyone to have crystal clear vision of where they are at moving forward and write out some personal and professional goals Mm -hmm. and your core values. When you match those two things, any vehicle that plops in your lap, such as Isogenics, can become your next vehicle. So what we quickly saw was we love just helping people transform because we love transforming. So personally, when I'm 44 years old, I want to be at my prime professionally, personally. I want to be by 2020. I already am doing TED Talks, have books written, have reached millions of people. Absolutely. Global thought leader. I see it. It's Mm -hmm. already actually done. Now this is my fun journey getting there. So that's so clear to me. But I also then professionally have those goals. But then I'm like, how is that impacting our lives personally? Well, at 16, 14 and 12, what are we doing? I've got summer. I'm training my niece on our path to 2020 Olympics as a mindset coach. 
I have a lot of things going on, but, <laughs> but, but a, a lot of this is looking at that piece of paper and kind of writing it in pencil, knowing these things evolve as you evolve, right. these goals professionally and personally will evolve with you, but kind of have a gist of like, well, what do you want 2020 to look like? How old will you be? Where mm -hmm. will, where ideally would you like to see yourself? What kind of house does it have a pool? And the more articulate you get, the more specific you get, and the more you see it in real time as if it's already happening, and the more you can feel it now and access it now, you can just start moving in that direction every bit every day. The isogenics piece of how that fits in for people was it fit in for us first personally, right? Personally, it was just, it wasn't a professional goal at that time. Actually, we shunned the business originally. We're like mm -hmm. too busy having kids, opening a gym. No way are we going to look at this as a biz, but I kind of just tucked it away in the back of my head saying that is kind of cool that this thing could help transform people. It's in line with what we like to do, which is help people get better. Yeah. But right now it only fits us personally because we were trying to get better, right? Mm -hmm. I was looking to lose the weight. But the, the isogenics lifestyle supports anyone who loves to help people get better in whatever their goals are. Then we suddenly realize, well, we're starting this gym thing. We're helping people transform. There's a need here. What are they doing in the other 23 hours of the day that they're not here at our class that we can help them with? And it was kind of a perfect storm. We had an in-house nutritionist. She moved away. And we're like, it's time to start sharing this stuff, what we're doing. Right. And I, I did the research and I went to an isogenics university, learned all about the ingredients, non-GMO, organic, the standards. And what I really loved is I love to work with people and businesses from a professional standpoint that sometimes it's what really hit home for me is this company is not just built on let's make money and exit. It is a legacy company of people coming out of retirement saying, how do we impact world health? And Scott and I always think really big. We want to impact world health. How do we fall in line with this company? Oh, we need to link arms with other entrepreneurs that also want to make a big dent in this world and say, this is just one tool. And this lifestyle fits a lot of our professional goals. When we looked at that column, our column was, we want to work from anywhere. We want to be able to be at school pickup. We want to go to kids' sporting games. You have to start looking at your everyday yeah. And you're every day, even in those years, what do we want our 2020 to look like? If we want to travel all summer, you really got to start putting those things out there for yourself. And then these vehicles will be very much more clear to you because you're like, oh, this isogenics thing, look at all these people. They're not tethered to a nine to five. They're making six figures or seven figures and they're helping people and they're working from anywhere. And how are they doing it? Oh, they're finding other influencers that want to do the same. Mm -hmm. And it actually became a pretty simple business model to follow. Because again, once you tune into that frequency, you just find the people that are like, I want to do that. Yeah. You don't have to grab people. Mm -hmm. And now what we're finding with going into 2018, that's super exciting is we're finding that people are stepping to us saying, this sounds really attractive. I want to work from home. I want to impact people. Hey, I went into nursing, but I don't love the hours, but I always loved helping people. Or, hey, I went into this. And what you're seeing is your core values personally and professionally can match the isogenics lifestyle and be an ambassador of this strong, confident living kind of approach that what is your most strong, confident life and how might this fit in for you? Yeah. So it's really cool now to see the physical result for people who just want the physical journey of weight loss and stuff migrate into, gosh, this thing really helped me. I could probably help a bunch of people. It happens so often. For me, that was yoga. I got very into yoga simply for the physical reasons. And I was 23, 24, and I was like, this is where all the cute girls are. Like, why would I not want to do this? Yeah, like, whatever. Give me a mat, and I'll stretch in the back. But I fell in love with it. And mm -hmm. first, it was like I started feeling these changes in my body, and these pains that I had had from poor posture were starting to go away, and I felt like I was breathing deeper and just being more clear. And that slowly started to build into the mental and the spiritual side of it, which then effectively led to meditation, the breath work, which I really like to separate now. Not that the yoga doesn't have all that as well, but I see myself distancing myself further and further away from the physical side simply of yoga and more of the literal definition of the union of, of what yoga provides. And you can find that in almost any aspect of life, especially if you first find a passion in one side of it. But I very much respect your... I really thank you so much for that nuts and bolts dissection of how you guys operate. You were saying that you start with a pen and paper. So you've got this whole digital side of things where you're producing tons of content for the internet and for your program. And you've got your pen and paper 
once again, how do you merge those two? These are questions that I just really like yeah, to hear from other yeah. people. I think it's blending. It's always acting from inspiration. So I think there's a very difference of moving into action because you feel like you're just checking something off your to-do list, which is literally just actions that you have to do. They become very mundane, checking your email and stuff like that. Right. But when you're kind of tapping into that more spiritual side of you, that sole purpose of you, that higher self of you, you find a more inspired state. So whether you do that through meditation or whether you do that by going for a walk or taking a bath or however you find that transformation from physical to mental to emotional to energetic you, that deep you, is you move into action from that point. So whenever you're feeling like, ooh, that lit something up inside me is when I take out a pen and paper. I mean, I literally have, this is like an art what is this? Sketch diary. In yeah, front you, of you me. Do the lines. But my latest, I have poems. Actually, it's usually happens for Scott and I. We're drivers. We'll be driving a telluride or we'll be going somewhere and doing a road trip. And suddenly it is a brain dump of not screens. I mean, I could type stuff out on right. a notepad on my phone or whatever, mm -hmm. but this is where I feel like the blend of the real life meets the digital life. And again, technology is not a bad tool when you use it as a tool, but when your stream of consciousness is coming out, and for me, a lot of the times it's the morning time. When you go to bed at night, you should seek whatever question you have. I usually pose if I'm stuck on something, I'll just tell my brain before I go to sleep. It would be really awesome if I woke up with an answer to this. And then I go to sleep and then I usually wake up very tuned into that answer or just a download of information. I've actually downloaded, I have not written it out yet, but I've already downloaded one of my very first books about okay. exponential marketing, which okay. is doing all this, connecting the real life with your digital life and realizing that that can be seamless. When you stop separating out technology as this shunned like screen time thing and you see it for the empowering tool that it is, then you start looking at the piece of paper in front of you in the same way from a very inspired state. But I usually do my dumps of things in journals and plain pieces of paper and I have a brain dump and you just start writing. And I just encourage people just in the morning, start writing whatever your thoughts are. And if you don't have any thoughts, start tuning into what you want more. You can easily tune into what you don't want. That's typically what we're conditioned as a society. And mm -hmm. that's usually one of the very first practices I help people with when I'm coaching people from a mindset perspective is you clearly know what you don't want. I don't want a job that's keeping me here. I don't want a husband that does this. I don't want, blah, 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 yeah. right? I don't want to open my bank account and see negative balance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone knows what they don't want. Absolutely. And then instead of going into action from that state, which usually brings you back to that state, which is even for weight loss. I don't want to look down and see 20 pounds, my stomach bellowing over my jeans. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows what they don't want. I call it my flip it list. Have that be what inspires you to what you do want. And then when you move from that inspired state, I do want to slip into my jeans. I do want to open my bank account and see $3 million. I do want to have a husband that treats me like this or a boyfriend that whatever, girlfriend, right. any of these things. And then you say, I want to tune into that frequency. I want to tune into whatever channel that is that is going to get me there. I believe solutions are everywhere. I believe what I want is out there. And you just believe and you start to see it and feel it. And that's what I'm really good at manifesting big shit. Yeah. Literally, <laughs> I can mm -hmm. like, big things <laughs> to come into my life. But I started really small with this philosophy yeah. of can you tap into this? And then you just start brain dumping every morning or mm -hmm. just have a pad by your bedside and see what happens in the morning. If you can mm -hmm. download just answers and solutions and believe that they're there for you, people, situations, all this focus on the things going right in your life. We always are focusing on what we don't want or the things go, even if there's nine out of 10 going wrong, we're looking at those things. We're talking about those things. We're complaining about those things to our friends over a beer. This is all the crap that's going on wrong. Right. But I say, no, start shifting towards that one thing that's going right. That's actually putting you in alignment on the path towards what you do want. And the more you keep shifting towards that, you'll be amazed at what comes your way. Yes. I have this little go-to, totally beat to crap, just super thin, because as a guy, I don't have the luxury of a purse or anything. So I keep a little teeny fold up in my back pocket or on my nightstand. That's just for anything that comes to mind. Just write it. There's no, I like having small, nice handwriting. I like it to be looking clean, but I purposefully keep this one. If 
I just want to draw a picture of an idea that's coming to me, like I want it there. And then I have my goal setting and journal, but I couldn't agree with you more about the power, whether or not it's a morning or evening or both, get it out of your head and get it on a piece of paper. Cause you'll be amazed at the realities that start to like come around mm -hmm. from just getting it out of your mind. It goes from being intangible and, and clouding your thoughts to being on paper and solid and cemented. And yeah, it, use, it'll use help a you make a decision. You can cross it out right? two weeks later and write something different, but at least you're feeding that new habit and you're setting intention into that. It's crazy what a piece of paper and a pen can do. It's amazing. You know, we've, yeah. we, we left it. A lot of our population left it with the emergence of computers. Mm -hmm. But there's something about, for me, I love the pen and paper specifically because I don't get banner messages or little sounds that ring on my piece of paper when yeah. I'm in the middle of trying to concentrate a thought. I practice very hard to not open my computer or not have my phone by me when I'm doing my journaling practice. I'm thinking through what's my daily goal? What's the most important thing that I'm usually avoiding on the day? Write that out. And then once I've kind of been proactive about my day, that's when I'll open up the calendar and look yeah. at the emails and stuff and start being reactive that's to amazing. what's happening. Yeah. I would really highly suggest for anyone listening to this to have more quiet time doing just that. I picture myself by a big old tree, even though I'm sitting in my bed writing. I just picture myself being out in nature and writing, which would be my ideal highest <laughs> self. I'm obsessed with old big trees. That's, but, that's, uh, that's interesting. I have a very similar mental image too that I'll, I'll do when I meditate, but also when I journalist. For me, I like... It's on a hill by a tree, sitting on a rock. I think it's because my, my hips don't like me sitting on the uh, ground. On the ground. <laughs> What's important is it's all nature, but there is like a highway down the hill that I can see because to me it represents the thoughts that can plague you, but you're away from that. You recognize that they're there, that there is going to be traffic, that there is going to be distraction, but you're separating yourself from it. You That's know? deep. It's, it's where, it's I like where... it. I like it. I actually have an image that these thoughts that come in and you can windshield wipe them away. Because again, whatever you're tuning into, whatever feelings that you have, you're going to attract the thoughts in. And those thoughts are out there. They exist. Mm -hmm. They're just going to come into your brain. Whether you decide to do with them is really up to you. That, and that's the power of will, the power of choice. Mm -hmm. I believe it's our superhuman power that a lot of people say, oh, I don't have willpower, Laura. Or teach me more willpower around eating or my mindset or my fitness. And I'm like, no, no. That actually is your number one superpower. You have the power of will, the power of choice. Absolutely. I love the idea of separating yourself out like that because that traffic, it's always it there. Stops. It never stops. No. It's always out there mm -hmm. until you sleep, right? <laughs> until you sleep. And that's why I say pose the questions at night for yourself. Yeah. So you might wake up with the answer. There is so much to digest off of this hour and where are we at? Hour and five minutes that we've been doing it. Just, I love these interviews, Laura, where... I'm looking at a solid page of framework and topics I could touch on, and I hardly glanced at it at all. It was We've great talking to We've scratched the surface of Laura St. John. There's so much more. There's we, a lot. We'll, There's we'll a do, lot we'll do more in the next year because Absolutely. it's been a pleasure, and I encourage everybody to be part of a voice of strong, confident living. Start stalking. Eventually start talking. <laughs> if they're interested in isogenics. We would just love to help people, yeah. and that comes from our heart whether it's fitness, nutrition, or mindset, we are dedicated to giving a lot of free content out there. There's thousands of people that follow our stuff that don't do isogenics. That's fine too. If it's yeah. a tool for you, it is. If it's not, it's not. There's just so many tools out there. So it's really exciting. Laura, thanks so much for sharing your purpose. I'll make sure to put all the ways to get in touch with the St. John's and the <laughs> thousands of adventures they're on and projects they're doing in the show notes. And stay tuned because there will be plenty more connection between the Mind Mill and the St. John's and PSF and all that. Living. Thank you, Seth. Really Absolutely. appreciate your time and everybody listening. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for listening to the Mindful Millennial Podcast. If you loved this episode, check out some of the other Mind Mill episodes. They're all free and available at themindmill.com and on all the major podcast platforms. Also, please, please, please take a second and leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. It's incredibly easy and it really is the best way to help the show. Stay tuned for more Mind Mill episodes coming down the line. I'll keep them interesting for you, I promise. Take it easy. This episode of the Mindful Millennial Podcast is supported by Isagenix. Isagenix provides premier health and wellness products for body recomposition, physical and mental performance, and healthy aging. I was introduced to Isagenix by the owners of my regular gym. 
two of the healthiest people I know, they couldn't help but share how the Isogenics program broke them out of their physical plateau and helped them achieve their gains, both physically and mentally. I was a bit skeptical, as one normally is when introduced to a nutrition program, but since hearing of Isogenics, I've witnessed over a dozen people firsthand transform their bodies and their minds with these products. Isogenics works hand-in-hand with a healthy diet, providing the much-needed plant-based proteins, pre- and post-workout supplements, cleansing kits, and much more. I recently brought a stockpile of Isogenics on my trip to Europe. The goal was to have some reliable and on-hand nutrition while on the move. I was floored by the results. Not only was it handy and a money saver, I've never seen such dramatic gains in my body. I felt strong, focused, high energy, and satisfied. So give Isogenics a try. It's cheaper than most comparable products on the shelf, made of the highest quality ingredients, and delivered right to your door. They even offer a no questions money back guarantee. Whether you're looking to switch up your normal supplements, kickstart your fitness, or discover a new healthy snack, Isogenics has something for everyone. Right now, go to sethmarcus.isogenics.com to obtain discounted membership pricing on all your orders.